I love playing games with my kids. It's probably my all-time favorite thing to do. There's one little game I play with my kids almost on a weekly basis. I call it the hand snatch game. I'm sure there's another name for it, and I'm sure I'm not the only dad who's ever played it, but the game is fairly simple. The game is played when I'm in a situation sitting next to my children, most commonly church. Usually I have a kid sitting next to me, and they'll reach over to hold my hand, but instead I snatch their hand tightly, apply gentle pressure until they're able to pull it free. Then I open my hand, palm up, and wait for them to reach their hand again. They'll inch their hand near again, watching for my hand to snatch, and pull back at the slightest movement of my fingers, not wanting to get caught in my grip again. An interesting thing happens whenever I play this game. If I jolt to snatch as soon as they come near, they pull back immediately, and I don't even get close. But if I wait, if I don't flinch my fingers, and they come closer and closer slowly until they're just touching my palm, and if I still wait, and they eventually put their entire hand in mind, and sometimes even look up at me and wonder if I'm still playing the game, in that moment, my hand quickly snatches around theirs, and I get them every time. There's other games we play where I follow a similar pattern, like when I pretend to be a sleeping monster. The behavior from my kids is the same. They'll creep closer and closer to me, start poking me gently, cautiously, and then they'll even start laying or jumping on my back. Then in a moment when they least expect it, I'll shoot up from the ground and grab them by the ankles and hold tight as they scream and try and get away. It's a fun little harmless game. I enjoy playing with the kids, but it provides a simple reminder for me about the importance of not getting complacent, of not letting your guard down. I want to share two experiences I had as a brand new missionary that help illustrate the, my personal experience with this idea. Mission story number one. 18 years ago now, I served as a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the Ecuador, Guayaquil, South Mission. After arriving in Ecuador to the mission office, I was then sent the next day to a small town nine hours inland called Catamayo. When I say small town, I mean you could walk across this town in about 15 or 20 minutes, something I did on nearly a daily basis. As a new gringo who barely spoke Spanish, I was trained by a wonderful missionary companion from Central America who didn't speak any English. There was nobody within many, many miles that, could really, that I could really communicate with. But he was very patient with me, and with his help, I quickly learned essential language communication skills and missionary training materials. My companion was very diligent in making sure that I spent the time I needed for study, memorization, language, developing all the skills I needed for success. My companion also loved buying movies. And in this little town of Catamayo, and really everywhere in Ecuador, there are pirated movie stands on every street corner. We'd be walking back to the apartment for the day, and he would always stop. We'd always stop for him to go buy some $2 DVDs. He was collecting some of his favorite movies to take home with him at the end of his mission. Since we were companions and I had to be with him 100% of the time, I would go and wait. Eventually, I would go check out movies with him. Soon, I started finding movies that I liked as well, and I ended up buying some for myself. Nothing wrong with that. Just buying movies to take home at the end of my mission. My companion carried with him a little DVD player that we would often use as part of missionary lessons with people who we would talk to. We loved playing little movies about Jesus or the restoration that we carried with us, and it was engaging and entertaining for anyone interested in hearing the messages that we had to share. My companion felt the need to start testing some of these DVDs he had bought to make sure that they worked. The, the DVDs that we were buying for his personal use for when he got home from his mission. So several times during any given week, he would take me to this little church where we met as a branch on Sundays and send me off to a classroom by myself to study and practice my language and missionary skills while he would pull out the TV in the other room, plug in his DVD player, and test his movies. I was perhaps naive to think he was really just testing them, but I tried to just focus on my studies. The amount of time we started spending at the church increased and increased for hours sometimes. I would be studying while he would be watching his movies. 
After several weeks of this, I had finished up all my study goals. There were little certificates and landmarks I had, to, I had to surpass with memorization and language skills. So there was no need for us to spend as much time at the church during the, the week anymore. But we were still doing it. You can guess where this is going. Eventually, we found ourselves just watching movies in a room of the church building. Although I did not feel comfortable doing something that was clearly a violation of mission rules, I felt too afraid to confront my companion. I was new, inexperienced, and weak. I wanted to get out there and do missionary work, but I felt stunted. What started out as just buying movies on the way back to the apartment turned into watching several movies a week instead of proselyting. Mission story number two. I'll share another experience with this same companion. He loved soccer. Well, football. As do most people in Central and South America, and as do I. Every Wednesday evening, the Catamayo branch and any friends in the town would all gather to play soccer behind the church building. They had a nice concrete slab that we could play on. However, like most missions, there are many rules that missionaries are obligated to follow, many of them up to the discretion of the mission president. One of those rules was we were not allowed to play soccer with members or investigators. I knew this, but my wonderful companion decided it was a rule he had no interest in following and justified it as a good opportunity to invite potential investigators and interact with them. Again, he's my companion, so I went where he went, and although we at first resisted, I resisted the urge to play at first, and I would just watch, eventually I ended up right alongside him playing soccer every Wednesday night. One night, in particular, we were playing, and the ball accidentally got kicked over the fence that surrounded the church property, and it landed on top of the roof of one of the neighboring houses. Being a young, active, and eager to help missionary, I volunteered myself to go up there and retrieve it. It was almost nine o'clock at night and quite dark, and I climbed over the fence and up onto the roof. Now, I'm from Alaska, and I've been on plenty of roofs in my life thus far, but never a tile one. So I was unfamiliar with how unstable and brittle these clay tile shingles could be. I walked carefully as I could up over to where the ball was. And right as I was reaching down to pick it up, I fell through the roof right into somebody's house. Thankfully, nobody was directly below me. But the family whose house I fell into was sitting over there in the kitchen at the kitchen table. And I scared the living daylights out of them. Instead of getting upset, they immediately came over and started asking if I was all right, still somewhat in shock that a gringo had just fell through their ceiling. Other than a sprained ankle, I told them in broken Spanish that I was okay, though, and then through the open front door, I saw my companion's frantic face rushing towards me. I could tell, looking at him, that he felt responsible and guilty for what had just happened, and I hobbled out of their home, apologizing and embarrassed and unsure of how to repair the damage that I had just caused. That was the last night we ever played soccer at the church building. And interestingly enough, we also never went to watch movies at the church again for the rest of the time that he was my companion. He was transferred soon after, and I remained in Catamayo with an American companion, but for the rest of his mission, whenever I saw him, we would chuckle about me falling through someone's ceiling. We even tried to teach the missionary lessons to that family whose roof I fell through, thinking it would have been quite a unique story that they had if they had decided to join the church. They could have told their kids and their fellow church members that they heard the message of the gospel from a missionary who fell from the sky into their home. Maybe someday I'll go back to Catamayo and see what's become of them. I want to talk for a minute about ambush predators. Nature's full of predators and prey. We've all watched a video, perhaps in school or on the Discovery Channel, of a lion or a cheetah chasing down their prey. Eventually, with speed and strategy, they capture their prey. But another type of predator we maybe don't see as much are ambush predators. Ambush predators are usually carnivores that capture their prey by stealth, luring their prey and using the element of surprise. Ambush predators don't have to bother with speed or fatigue. They just have a tremendous amount of patience and wait and wait and wait before launching a sudden overwhelming attack that quickly incapacitates and captures their prey. It's a highly effective strategy and to me, even more intriguing. Now, I shared these missionary stories to illustrate the message of what can happen when we find ourselves inching closer and closer to what we know to be a wrong choice, just like my kids in the hand snatch game. If they keep their distance, 
they're safe and I'll never get them. And from that distance, you know, we can say to that choice, you're so far away, I'll never even come close. But then we find ourselves making small compromises, small adjustments in the wrong direction, justifying and making excuses along the way. And before we know it, we've arrived at the choice we claimed we'd never have to make. And it reacts. It snatches us. It might even wait until we feel quite comfortable as we snuggled up right against it. And then it closes in on us. In reality, it's not the choice that does this. It's the consequence of the choice we made to get there. We can control our choices, but we can't control the consequences. Now, I had a wonderful missionary companion and many others after him who all made their own choices about how to serve as a missionary. But regardless of whatever choices they made, I also made my own choices. I also suffered the consequences of those choices, not just as a missionary, obviously, but throughout my entire life. It seems to be human nature to test the boundaries of complacency by inching closer and closer to a known danger, convincing ourselves we won't get harmed. Whether that's physical, spiritual, emotional, or mental harm, we seem to be quick to forget the consequences of wrong choices or the severity of the grip that awaits us once we get snatched. I remind myself when I play the hand, sn the hand snatch game or the monster game with my kids that the best strategy to avoid consequences of the games is just to steer clear, right? T to keep distance, to not compromise or justify. So why don't my kids do it? Well, partly because it's just a fun and silly game with dad. No real harm is ever going to come to them. But also because that's not reality. I'm going to slip up. I'm going to give in to temptation. Everybody does. Sometimes the game is just too enticing. And it's what I do after that really matters. Hopefully I learn. Hopefully I grow. And hopefully I have the strength to pull my hand back out after it gets snatched. Thanks for listening, everybody. My name is Mike Christensen. I also have a video uh, music channel. It's called It's Mikey, He Writes It. Um, this channel, Vox Nostra, it's a YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's also a blog, voxnostra.blog or voxnostra.org. Feel free to subscribe there as well. Uh, there's other wonderful bloggers on there that uh, post very frequently. Thank you for listening.